There it is. Well, some of this. Okay, um, we did a, a large number and quantity of uh, inventory monitoring and Huawei surveys at the Big Mosquito Project area. So, um, if I were to talk about that, we'd be here for a really long time. <laughs> so, um, some of the very important structure that we have, as Amanda mentioned earlier, is the old forest multi-strata. It's very limited on our forest. And some of the habitat that we have in the Big Mosquito Project area is uncommon, uh, particularly for Pine Martin. Uh, it's very limited. And so, one of the, th I thought, for the purposes of this talk, I wanted to talk about the importance of large diameter trees and multi-strata structure to the variety of wildlife species that we have on the Maui Earth. Um, in particular, the American Martin, we have very limited habitat for the American Pine Martin, small weasel, uh, here on the forest. And the population viability for the species is believed to be in decline. So any type of habitat that we do have that fits their very specific criteria, we are um, going to try and protect. They are one of our MIS species, management indicator species for the forest, for old growth specifically. They're also a, a sensitive species, regional list for BLM and Forest Service species sensitive, and for a, a strategic species for the state of Oregon. Uh, one of the other species that I'm going to focus on is the pileated woodpecker. Uh, pileated woodpecker is our largest North American woodpecker, unless you believe that we still have ivory billed with woodpeckers, which some people do. <laughs> Um, it is the woody woodpecker, woodpecker, um, and I'm sure anybody that's hunted or cut wood has, has seen one of these guys. They're they're pretty charismatic animal. Um, they're also a management indicator species for old growth, D&D, uh, &D, dead and down, and snags, and they're also a primary cavity nester, meaning that they create um, the first cavity that a lot of other species will use, as opposed to species that use cavities made by other animals for their nesting or resting or roosting areas. So they're um, really a key species for some of these multi-strata areas and old growth areas because they provide habitat with those huge cavities that they make for so many other species. It's, it's pretty amazing how many other species use these guys' cavities. Um, and they're also, of course, a sensitive species and a strategic species for the state of Oregon. Pileated woodpeckers are also um, on the endangered species list for the state of Washington. Okay. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> so as I just talked about, this is a little pine martin, little weasel, and the uh, infamous woody woodpecker, Toledo woodpecker. So these were some of the, um, these are our requirements for under our um, Maui National Forest Resource Management Plan. These are old growth management areas that we manage throughout the forest. For pine martin, we have 160 acres of basically a breeding habitat. Um, set aside in specific areas for pine martin, and 80 for replacement areas. And basically, um, in both of these cases, replacement areas represent um, stands that we have set aside to replace our primary areas, which are these and these, in case of catastrophic events like uh, stand replacement wildfire or flood. Um, in our case, mostly it's fire, fire events that would destroy these suitable habitats. So these are potential areas for replacing those those primary habitats. So we have 160 that we typically set aside for Pine Martin, 80 for the replacement area. These are acres, of course. Uh, 300 for Pileated Woodpecker for the breeding territories, 300 for the feeding areas, and then 150 for the replacement areas. And I know um, these acreages may seem kind of high uh, for, for some people, for their view of things, but keep in mind that the territories for both of these animals are typically much larger than what we have set aside. Uh, Pileated woodpecker in particular can have a home range size of 800 to 1600 acres. So this is 600 acres is, is pretty far below that to some degree, depending on how they're using their habitat. And pine martin, their home ranges can be anywhere from 200 to 600 for males. So um, these are below what current science is supporting for the home range for these species. So um, I apologize, this came out a little blurrier than I hoped. Um, this is just a wildlife map of the Big Mosquito Project area. And just to give you an idea of the complexity of the wildlife analysis that we typically do for our projects, the Big Mosquito Project area is what, like 36,000, about 36,000 acres. Um, our analysis area for this project is roughly 52,000 acres. So our analysis extends far beyond 
the actual project boundary, which is right here, this red line right here, because of the um, direct and indirect and cumulative effects to different species that we have to analyze. And part of the, this has to do with the way these animals disperse and use areas in and around the project area. So um, in the project area itself, uh, designated old growth, I think Amanda mentioned this earlier, we have about uh, 1759 acres of designated old growth. And so these areas in brown were ones that we were designated through our corporate uh, data, data layers. And we have six of those, we have six total in the area, excluding this one on the boundary right here. Four of those have been designated for Pileata woodpecker, two for pine martin, and one of the pine martin ones is actually designated for both species. Uh, within that group, uh, this one actually burned completely, so that's not even an existing old growth stand anymore. So part of what we're gonna do with the project is we'll make interdisciplinary agreements to decide what to do with this old growth structure. If we will replace this area, if it's worth it to do that, or, and also some of the existing areas are below our standards and are not the correct sizes. So part of our um, process will be to determine whether some of those areas are worth altering or replacing. Um, as Amanda mentioned before for this, we've got a really high percentage of old, this is old forest multistrata, OFMS, and this is just uh, old structure LOS, old forest multistrata and single strata, we have very high percentages for this project, much higher than we have in a lot of the other projects that we, that we work on. Let's see if this will work, okay. And this is an example of um, source of primary habitat for pine martin is basically breeding habitat. There are requirements for it to be a functional breeding habitat for these animals. So um, they're closely associated with late successional stands of cool music, which is cool moist, mixed conifer, um, subalpine fir in particular, uh, grand fir and western larch and lodgepole pine. Some of the species that I've listed here, uh, ponderosa pine dug for grand fir with large diameter, which is greater than 20 inch trees and also um, large down logs, and this is this component is hugely important for these animals because it's how they do a lot of their foraging. They eat a lot of small mammals and um, birds and a variety of different things throughout the year. Uh, moderate to high canopy closure, by that I mean around 50% or more, which is a pretty high canopy closure if you think about it. Um, interspersion of riparian areas and meadows are also very, very important for this animal. And a lot of the roosts and denning sites that they have will be associated with those riparian corridors if they're functional. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the two designated management areas. One of these areas burned um, our acreages for designated old growth. And also with part of our uh, project, you know, it's very important that we validate these old growth areas because sometimes they're put in through aerial photos and GIS with the hope that those uh, those determinations are correct. So part of what we do with projects is we ground truth and go out and actually look at these areas and determine whether they're actually suitable or, or they fit our criteria for old growth. This little pine mark, <laughs> what they look like. And this is a soda can, just to give you an idea of the size of this little guy. And these guys are ferocious. I've seen them with snowshoe hairs, and the snowshoe hair is huge, and it's this little animal, and they're just dragging the hair. <laughs> so pretty uh, ambitious. <laughs> Uh, and this is just, you know, off one of our remote camera stations. These guys are very hard to get. Sometimes we'll put out 100 cameras. I think it took a couple hundred to get that one. But we, we get a lot of other animals on the cameras too, so it's not necessarily just for pine one. So um, for the pileated woodpecker, uh, many people may know a little bit about these guys. They're very, very closely associated with old forest multi-strata structure. Um, they do use deciduous forest. Uh, when I was working in the southern U.S., I used to survey for these guys in cypress swamps. So it's pretty amazing. But they're, um, they are adaptable, but they do have to have these huge old growth trees in some of their areas for it to, for it to work for them because they won't nest in anything else. So, um, and of course, another, another animal associated with this dead and down component, large diameter trees. Here they really like ponderosa pine and a large canopy cover in the cool and moist, which is what we're talking about for big mosquito, greater than 70%, which is pretty high um, closure. That's, oh, that's that plane. <laughs> it's like, that's not part of my presentation. <laughs> and as 
I discussed in the beginning, we had four designated management areas. Um, all these were occupied. We formally surveyed for affiliated in all these areas in 2013, and our existing Pine Martin dog was also occupied by Pine Martin. And I've already seen that one. And this is just an example. You see the sheer size of this tree. And this was actually in Big Mosquito this summer. This is a male feeding young. We had three little nestlings in there. And this was the biggest one, um, probably standing on top of the other guys. It's big one. <laughs> Yelling for food. And this is just, um, I wanted uh, to show people the large variety and number of animals that use this end-down habitat. I know sometimes when people are out cutting wood, they go, oh, you know, it's not that important, this down log, you know, what's going to use this? You know, maybe sometimes people don't think about it that much. But they're, um, and these are just a, a small sample of the huge number of animals that use these, um, that use dying, dead or dying wood in a variety of categories. So for living trees with decays, these are ones that are still standing and still have some, some life left in them, maybe some green branches, but they're obviously on their way out. <coughs> so in some cases, they might be standing for quite a few years. We have the uh, Williamson's and red sap sapsucker, blackback woodpecker, which is actually be, being proposed for Endangered Species Act listing. Uh, the pileated, once again. Uh, hollow trees are really, really important for marten, flying squirrel, pileated again. Um, black bear, particularly young black bears and sows will use uh, snags that are broken off the top for refugia from male bears, which will kill the young bears. Um, Bow swift is a big one, a big insect eater around here. They nest uh, in large diameter snags. And the broom trees with the mistletoe can also serve as a nest platform and used by the long-eared owls. We also have uh, great gray owls that will use these broom trees, a uh, goshawk, and American Martin again. Uh, dead trees, we have, a, you know, these are just a couple examples, like I said, um, woodpeckers, nuthatches, bats. Bats very, very much like dead trees and snags and trees where the bark is coming off. Uh, down logs are used by and everything from black bears to grouse to amphibians and small mammals. And these are some of the animals that we had verified documentation on in the Big Mosquito Project area. Um, some that we did formal surveys for and some more were incidental or sightings or on our um, bait stations, our remote camera stations that we put out there. And of course a lot of these are associated with the cavity nesters or the great grays will use the broom trees, northern sawwits, owl, this is, these are owls, flammulated owl and northern pygmy owl. Um, are cavity nesters as well. And every single one of these guys will use pileated nest cavity. And so will these, and so will um, American Martin, Northern Flying Squirrel, and quite a few other animals. And this is a Northern Sawwit owl, actually using a pileated woodpecker nest cavity, and large diameter snake. That's it.